In the era of the Windrush generation, with the UK celebrating 75 years, the big question is, who is a part of the Windrush generation? Are we all by default, if we are from the Caribbean, or do our four parents had to be on the Empire Windrush? That's a big question. However, today, the show will center on one whose parents came over to England from the Caribbean in the late 50s. A first generation son of parents who came over to England from the Caribbean in the late 50s. Born in the UK, living southeast, he started his company PLM Consultants in 1998. He currently trades under the name Broker House Limited because it better reflects the service he provides to the residential and business market. He provides advice and services to the SME market and the general public in the areas of wills, LPAs, trusts, IHT, tax, insurance, document storage, and probate. How do we empower our people and leave a lasting legacy? That's a probing question at this time. Joining us today is Patrick Morrison of Broker House. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Thank you. Good, good, good. How was your day? Very good today. I've had a good day. What is it like in the King's um, country? Because, you know, many countries are saying, let's get rid of King Charles or everything like that. What, what's, what is it like in the I, UK? I have no partiality to King Charles or not. <laughs> I have a partiality to my business, my family, my loved ones, and the service I provide people. I think, I think that is so crucial and I mean the whole essence of this topic is going to be very interesting. But before we go any further, mm. uh, we just celebrated and is celebrating the Windrush, 75 years of the Windrush. And um, it's a big thing in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, what's your take on the Windrush um, legacy? I think it's important that we do recognise what our parents and foreparents have done. I also think it's important that we take ownership mm -hmm. of our history and our legacy. Yeah. We determine the day, the time and how yeah. without um, requesting or asking for permission. If it's given to us and they want to participate in controlling our history and our legacy, then that's fine. Nobody's mm. left out. But you know, don't dictate uh, how we celebrate our history and our, our four parents and, yeah. and what we contributed to this country. So what you're actually talking about, and if I link this with even Black History Month, you're mm -hmm. talking about don't wait till the time when it is so-called given to you. When it's given Cre to you. Create these opportunities. Yeah, I don't believe in asking for permission, uh -huh. uh, not in a disrespectful way. Yeah. But it's you, it's our identity, yeah. it's our lives, and we turn and say, well, let's come together yeah. and let's celebrate mama and papa, yeah. grandpa and grandpa, auntie and uncle, on what they've done. Mm. Um, and you know, if we can do it on a grand scale, then fine. If we do it on a small scale, yeah. we do it on a small scale. But I don't believe in going to people asking permission, can we have this day? Yeah. No, it's our day, we control it. Do, do, do you sense that that is something which is happening or had happened, or people are taking the initiative and creating the, the I, day? I'm not close enough to the organizations or the setup, yeah. but I just believe in ownership, yes. um, you own your own business, own your own home, yes. own your name, own your legacy, own your family, own yeah. your life, yeah. own your history, own what's yours, mm. and then you dictate how you want it to, to be um, and how you go forward, uh, mm. how you spread your name. Uh, I think that's really important. And, and it, it is so very important, as, especially for black people as well, mm -hmm. that we have to actually um, you know, launch out into the deep. Yeah. Um, at this time, because we, we spoke earlier, you were talking about even with the historical, the, the legacies of our four parents mm -hmm. who were creating and building and buying houses yeah. and all those sort of things. Yeah. But now it's a slight difference. It's like we're. Oh, it, it may still be happening. I yeah. don't know. But, yeah. you know, we, we created a family history group, and one of the family members um, mm. shared <clears throat> some information about our uncles mm. back in the 60s. And, you know, two or three of them came together and bought property yes. in South London. Uh, and it was amazement to me that they'd done that back then. Yeah. What are we doing now? Mm. Has it been passed on? Have we learned anything from it? Yes. Um, 
you know, a lot of us have become wealthier, we've become better, yeah. but are we working together to do it? Are we just being very individu individualistic? Yes, yes. I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to judge anybody on that. But I think in order to succeed in today's society, and in society as a whole, we have to have relationships, we have to build associations, mm. and we have to work together. You so, cannot do yeah. it alone. So how do you think, like, um, as a community that we are building and... Um, you know, offering and leaving financial legacies mm. to our children. Children, mm. how, how do you see that happening? Uh, we're going to talk about your line of business, but mm -hmm. the financial legacy aspect within the community. Mm -hmm. For me, it's all about education. Yes, it's about sharing. It's about talking. Mm. If you're with your partner, you talk. You have your children mm -hmm. at different stages in their life. You talk. Yes. You bring them up to the knowledge of how things are done while you're here. You know, you have a shop. Your and child when you say here, you're talking on this earth. On this earth yes. and in the UK yes. or wherever you are in, yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, transfer and legacy of wealth is pretty much the same. Mm. Um, but it's important that you get people around you. You get people involved. You get the right advice, the right yeah. information so you can make the right decisions, yeah. which is um, personal to you. Mm. Now, brokerage house, cause that's, that's, Broker what, house, that's yeah. what we want to talk about. Yeah. It's about um, you're creating this, uh, what should I say, this, it's in, I, I call it in a sense a movement, mm -hmm. you know, because a movement, okay. is, a movement is creating um, yeah. something that is lasting. Yeah. I, I said to a person the other day, when I say looking for a job, I said, no, look for a position. Yeah. So if you look for a job, it's just going to be get a position, which yeah. is something which created within yourself. About Brokerage House, because, uh, tell us about uh, Brokerage House. Right. And, uh, Bro about Broker, your... Broker House Limited was, was started purely because um, I was providing a service in another area, which is very similar, mm. for a long time. And it was helping people, and it was giving me a lot of satisfaction helping people get out of a difficult situation. Yeah. I've been paid for it. It was satisfactory. But the greatest satisfaction was actually seeing the relief, the joy, and the peace I was able to give people with the knowledge and the advice and the, the actual service yeah. right the way through the life of the product. Yeah. Um, so I decided to get involved into estate planning mm -hmm. and um, I'm registered with the Society of Will Writers. Okay. Um, I've got my own license. I'm insured. Everything is, is all there. I'm on their website. You can call up. You can check me out. I'm there. Yeah. Um, and it's about educating people um, about what happens to their wealth later on in life, mm -hmm. in the middle of their lives, or when they're starting out in life. Mm -hmm. If there's a change in their life, when they get married, when they have a baby, when they purchase something, yeah. when they want to grow, how yeah. are they going to leave <clears throat> what has been left and don't leave it late it's interesting you say that is it that people sometimes have wealth yeah and they do not know that they have wealth until someone points it out to them that sometimes. they have got wealth sometimes mm -hmm. and it's also sometimes an area that people don't want to talk about yes so they know what it is but they don't really want to talk about it yeah it's something they say I'll, I'll do that next year i'll do that next week i'll mm -hmm. do that another time yeah. but planning means you deal with it when the time's right for you, yeah. you deal with there and then, and you take the necessary steps. So you don't necessarily mm. do it all in one go. Yeah. But you take the necessary, necessary steps for your financial freedom and the financial freedom of your loved ones yes. and your community or what's important to you. And that's important. Because at the end of the day, you have a responsibility. I believe you do. Yeah. I believe you do. Um, I believe as Caribbean, West Indian people, yeah. we have achieved a lot. Um, but I believe there's more we can achieve. Right. And yeah. if we get involved in certain things, certain circles, educating ourselves, being comfortable with some of the people that we're talking to, mm. and asking all the necessary difficult questions and getting the full stops and commas that makes you comfortable to make the right decision, then you are empowered. Right. And that's the beautiful thing. Because once you're empowered, yeah. it's self-perpetuating. You'll run. So what I'm picking up from yourself is that you are into empowerment self yes. empowerment of individuals because you you said after you leave there's a sense of relief a sense of understanding and being very much so. as well very much yeah. so the amount of times i've sat down and spoken mm. with with clients and you can feel the apprehension when you're, you're talking and the minute you can start to break the ice 
you have something common, yes. you're talking about where you come from, mm. experience you've had in life, reason why you do what you do, reason why you're doing what you're doing. Yes. Um, and then they start to talk about and start to think, well, I want this to happen if this happens. What can I do if that happens? Mm. And then once you start to personalize the service to their circumstances, straight away, you can see the veil lifting off them right. and they feel free and comfortable in talking because you don't mean them no harm. So therefore, at that point, you would say, they're like putty in your hands. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, yeah. Not, not, directly. not that bad way. Not directly, but yeah. I, I understand. Look, yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, I'm a salesman. I've been a yes. salesman my whole life. Yes. So I understand body language. I understand human psychology. Yes. I understand when you're talking to people and their response to you. Yes. And I know how to tap into that. Yes. But the greatest thing, I think, is to be honest, truthful, yes. and have an integrity about you and the work that you're doing. Yes. People pick up on that faster. Fantastic. Now, we're here now. We're talking about um, some of your services now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you go through, but what would you say is your top service that you, you, you um, relate to the community with? The most imp I would say the most important one that creates the most interest is a will. Mm. A will is just an expression of your wish, yeah. of what you want to happen when the inevitable happens. We're all going to reach that inevitability and inevitability. Yes, get that yes. word out. Yeah. So it's like, do you want to control that or do you want someone else to control mm. it? The more you have, the more you want to control. Yeah. So that's basically what a, a will is. And I would say that is what creates the most interest. That's what people want to talk about first. And then you start talking about some of the other products, depending on the client's circumstances, because some of the products may not be applicable to that client. So, so do you find that people are amenable or are um, willing to move into will or you find that you have to sometime so do people reach out to you about wills a lot or do you find that you have to break it down to people i get referrals yeah, yeah. so um, my business has been built on referrals it has been i don't advertise i don't use social media i'm not very good at that mm. but that's something that needs to change just to yeah. raise the awareness like i see what you're doing yeah. Um, but once people understand what the product and services are, you take them on a step-by-step -step journey. So I'm dealing with wills. Yes. Then I deal with what we call a lasting power of attorney. Mm. There are two types of lasting power of attorneys. You've got one for health or welfare and one for property and financial. Yes. Yes. So it depends on what the client wants, what's important to them with regard to their circumstances mm. as to what product mm. they're prepared to take yeah. out. And, and ladies and gentlemen, um, the, the numbers for Mr. Morrison and uh, brokerage is going to be scrolling down so you can reach out to him as well um, for that so we, we talk about wills which is something I notice at times whereby prominent persons that mm -hmm. and then somehow you hear a GoFundMe mm -hmm. which is going around yeah um, and a lot of GoFundMe keep mm -hmm. coming around when people die yeah why do you think and what should people um, try to do to avoid such things it's the same again proper same. planning at the right appropriate time People will find, some people might find it embarrassing to yeah. do, do GoFundMe. Some people won't feel away. I'm not here to judge people. Yes. What I am here to say is that there is an alternative way. Mm. Yeah, there are products and services out there which are very affordable that can alleviate the stress and the pressure of the family members and the loved mm. ones that are left behind mm -hmm. to deal with your demise. Because it's a stressful time. Yes. It's a hurtful time. And sometimes the last thing they want to be thinking about is an insurance company this mm -hmm. piece of paper, dealing with the council, dealing with the government. Yeah. They don't want that. Yeah. But inevitably, it has to be done. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm here. I'm here to help you through that yeah. process, but allow you to grieve or to mm -hmm. celebrate mm -hmm. your loved one's lives. Because I remember when I did my will a few years ago, and, uh, and the guy came by, and it was uh, the wife, and we sat down, and he had to be going through all the different bits. It was a really challenging moment at the same time. Mm. And the time leading up to the gentleman coming to the house, I was driving so consciously. <laughs> I was on the motorway coming from Medway a lot in Kent, and I was on yeah. the motorway a lot. And I was, why am I thinking about Will? Why am I thinking about Will? Yeah, it's on your mind. <laughs> it was on my mind. Yeah. You know? But it, I, I think a lot of people sometimes think, and I have friends mm -hmm. who, are, who also haven't got wills. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying, you, know, you need to get your will, you need to get yourself prepared. Why do you think people are, I don't know, is it scared or don't want to touch it? Oh, Some, Ali, what do you sometimes think? I find with yeah. our people mm. that when you talk about a will, you're wishing death on them. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I was. That's what I was feeling. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's it's you know you can take that in all areas of your life. If yeah. I wish for this, then this is going to happen. If yeah. I wish for that, that's going to happen. No. At the end of the day, we we live in 2023. We yes. live in a world we know time is valuable. Yes. We know that 
we need to enjoy ourselves, we want to live our lives mm. to the full, there's going to come a day when we will close our eyes. Mm. When that day comes, I want that, I want that to be a day of celebration yes. and remembrance for people, and also what has been left for who you want to be leaving it for. Yes. Don't want it to be painful, don't want it to be stressful, mm. don't want to have an argument. It may happen, it may not, but yeah. unless you can alleviate that, and that's what a will does. Yes. Okay? It's like taking out an insurance policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't want to claim on insurance because the ultimate of life insurance is death. Yeah, yeah. But you know if it does happen and the life insurance is there, the amount of comfort it can bring mm. that cash lump sum of money mm. for whatever reason yes. takes the pressure off. So, so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you get your will in order and, and, um, and get it all sorted. Okay, well, let's look at the, um, the next one, which is LPAs. Mm -hmm. Now, because I see these names and so like that, what, what is, what's an LPA? Yeah, LPA, as I said before, is a lasting power of attorney. Mm. There were two types. Mm. The, the document is registered with the Office of Public Guardian. Yes. So it becomes a legal document, and you are appointing yeah. somebody who's called an attorney to manage your affairs mm. when you can no longer do so. Mm -hmm. You might be out of the country, you can't do so. Yes. You may be incapacitated, bedridden for whatever reason, you can't manage your affairs. You mentally can't manage your affairs, you might have had a breakdown. Yes. COVID and the experience of COVID has raised the profiles and wills and LPAs so much it's unbelievable yes. because people found themselves in a situation where they couldn't manage their loved one's affairs. Someone had to be acting on yeah. their behalf. Yeah. yeah. Is, is, is it something whereby the um, official solicitor sometimes will kick into play with that one? That depends on who you appoint as your attorney. Yes. Um, whoever you appoint, if you appoint a professional body, mm. they will charge a fee for yeah. doing that work because that's their work. Yes. You can appoint a loved one. You have to appoint somebody that you trust ultimately mm. Mm. Um, because you're giving that person the authority to your finances yes. and to communicate with the medical profession on your behalf. Mm. And, and also the trust now, the trust is the other one as yeah. well, the IHT inheritance mm -hmm. tax. Mm -hmm. All right, so if I deal with trust first, mm. there are two types of trusts. Mm. You've got a trust in your lifetime. Yes and you've got a trust included within your will. The trust included in your will kicks in when your will kicks in. So that mm -hmm. means that kicks in at your demise. Yeah. The trust within your lifetime is activated once you sign that legal document to move that asset into a trust for whatever reason yeah. you choose to move it yeah. into the trust for. So you've got a lifetime trust and you have a will trust. Within those two categories, mm. you've got a list of so many different types of trust that does different things yeah. in relation to what the client wants. And, and also, I understand that there are different clauses, or different rules and guidance yes. for going into these things. Put your, people like to put your children name on it, but yeah. you can get tax yeah. down the road or so. I think we need to dispel certain myths. Yes. At some point in time, inheritance tax is unavoidable. And I'll, right. I'll touch on inheritance tax in a minute. Yeah. Okay? You can reduce it. You can cast it to one side. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you fall within the threshold, yes. you will be paying inheritance tax. Right. The percentage of inheritance tax depends on how long you have to go to pay that tax, yeah. how long that asset has been moved. Mm. So many different factors, but there are thresholds. Yes. So some people say, I want to do this because I don't want to pay inheritance tax. I will say to them, well, then don't die. <laughs> because at the end of the day, tax and contracts yeah. is what this country is built on. We need to learn the rules of the game mm. so we can keep our assets within our generational mm. wealth, within our culture, as long as possible. So what you're saying is that somewhere along the line is going to catch you. Somewhere along the line it's going to catch you. It, um, it's, who you, it's who you want it to catch. Who do you want it to catch? And also, <laughs> what you have to understand, yeah. we, we work and we live and we do what we do because we, mm. want, to, we want to grow. Yes. We want to achieve. That will come with financial gain, hopefully. Mm. If that financial gain comes, that needs to be managed. Yeah. That needs to be managed when you get it. That needs to be managed when you want to spend it. That needs to be managed when you want to give it away. Is, is it that people are somewhat wanting to somewhat leave it to their family and to 
for the government to get less. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. No. Well, we want that. Silburn, it? sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, like I said, you, you need advice, mm. um, you need professional advice, yeah. and you need guidance on, on how to manage that situation when it arises. Yeah. So within your will, you have your executors. Mm. They're the people who execute your wishes. Mm. Within the will, you have the beneficiaries, those who will benefit from the, the legacy of the person giving the gift. Yeah. Um, and each step of the way, they have a responsibility. Yeah. I have a responsibility to educate the person giving the gift, the person who's executing the wishes, and the person benefiting from the gift. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break and come back, and we're going to look at some of the, the plus and the disadvantages of actually not really getting into your preparing mm. yourself for the future yeah i'll come back to you in a second thank you Welcome back and thank you for joining us with uh, Mr. Patrick Morrison from the brokerage house and we're going to make a big deal now. Are you ready to make a big deal? Yeah, I'm ready to do. All right, good, good, good. Now tell us now, um, and this is something I was thinking about, is there, there seem to be a lack of engagement within our black community. Let's call a spade a spade, really. And, um, and in not getting our finances in order. And people are maybe uh, scared of dealing with it. What, what do you think is the reason why? And what can be used to encourage persons? I'll, to do I'll so? speak from my experience. Yeah. Um, and the experience dealing with black people. Yes. All right. Some people think they can't afford to. Yeah. All right. Because there's no point applying for a product like insurance, which is a monthly fee. Yes. And you run for a year and you cancel. Mm. Because there's no money back. Yeah, it's, it's a You're waste not, of money. Yeah, yeah. So it has to be set at an affordable limit. And it has to be something that they can continue. Which is why you do the financial plan. Yeah. Which is why you go through the reasons why and what's important to you. Because mm. then the client is making that commitment and that decision. You're mm. just facilitating it. So a lot of the reasons why people don't is that they feel that they can't afford it. Which is understandable mm. when you take into account the economic climate that we're in. Mm. And the challenges that people are facing. Sometimes the first thing they cut is the insurance, insurance because yeah. there's no clawback on them or they're mm -hmm. not into a contract or that type. But I'll implore people that find a level that you can commit to, yes. no matter how small it is, mm -hmm. and commit to it and then build on it. Yeah. Because there's nothing more powerful than that compound interest in building. No matter if you start with £10 or £5, mm -hmm. Commit to that because it really is powerful. And, and really and truly, there needs to be a reminder as to why they did it in the first yeah. instance. And their children, their families. And this is where the, the relationship in the service that we provide comes in. Yes. Because I'm not the type of person to see you, provide a service, walk out like a salesman rubbing my hands. You never hear from me no, again. Multi -business. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't work like that. Yes. I'm in contact with you, even if you don't want me to be in contact with you. Because mm. I want to make sure that what you have from Broker House is a service, which is quality service you can trust, yes, which is my yes, mantra right yes, there. Yes, yes. Yeah? What's the mantra for you? Quality service you can trust. Quality service you can trust, yeah. which is um, your thing. Now, that's very important because I think, in a way, it has got to get into the mindset of persons mm -hmm. as well, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a mentality. It's, it's an education. It's a, mental, it's a mentality. It's a financial education yes. as well. And it's important because, and it's something you have to put, <coughs> mm. just like you know mm. your, some people know their bank account number and sort code. Yes. Yeah. You know your PIN number. Yeah. You need to know where you stand, where your finances are. Mm. No matter how big or small. And it's to have that aspiration and dream mm. to want to achieve more and do more. Yeah. Because it will help you think about what can I do to negotiate this life to earn more money, generate more money. Yeah. Is it about working for more money or is it about investing money to accumulate more money? Is yeah. it a combination of both? Yeah, yeah. That, that's very interesting there because even when talking about the, um, I was on a show the other night talking about the interest rate, which went to five. Yeah. 
And uh, I, I think I mentioned a point that uh, persons need to look at their finances mm. and also to see how they can create more yeah. finances. And I think there was sort of um, voices were saying, you know, the government should not shouldn't push that on people's mm -hmm. throat to actually create more wealth. Mm. But as a financial person, what would you say to persons at this time within this whole era? We're talking about recession, interest rate has gone up, mortgage are being hit, and yet you're going to come and say buy insurance. Yeah, and <laughs> all, all of these uh, are fear. Yes. And they're real fears. Yeah, don't yes. think it's something that's not going to happen to you. It's going to happen to everybody. Yes. But I think we've got to take a leaf out of the book of our parents when yes. they came. Yeah. They didn't have the opportunities that we have now. They had less, but they made it work. Mm. How did they make it work? They came together. We know about the word <coughs> partner. Yes. Some people call it susu, they call it so many different things. Mm. But they came together and formed their own financial institutions so that they could benefit. Uh, they slept in one room. Yes. They bought a house. Yes. They lived on different floors. They adjusted to the climate they were in in order to be better. Mm. We've been very comfortable for a very long time. 0% interest, no interest rates gone up, everyone's going to know how you manage. Mm. I don't know if anyone's going to manage. I don't know who's going to buckle, who's going to stand. Yes. But if we can work together, support and encourage yes. one another, yes. Yes. and I don't know what we need to do, yeah. but we do need to come together yeah. in a more concise effort to support one another, or work with another, give one another ideas, encourage one another, yeah. give a slap on someone's back and to lift people up yeah. when I, they're falling yeah. down. I, I like what you're saying about coming together, working together, building together, because sometimes they say the black community do not work together. Yeah. But then a colleague of mine was saying, well, let's work with who want to work together yeah. and build together. Yeah. Because that is what you're talking about, which happened in the Windrush era. Yes, it did. In that era. It is like somebody was saying, Marcus Garvey and all those guys mm. never had internet, never had all these, these ways how they can communicate. Yet no. they built a massive movement. The largest black organization that has ever been built. Why? Because of yeah. his character, his yeah. personality, his passion, and he educated himself about his business. And he went about yeah. it fervently. So where then would you say, from your perspective, of mm. course you're going to say, that's not maybe the full answer, but where have we missed it? Mm -hmm. Where have the black community missed it? Whereby we were on a particular trend yeah. with the wind rush. They came with a mentality, I yes. to say, to take over because, yeah, man, we're going to England and we're going to work hard. But somehow there seemed to be a dip. Yeah. And I think the, the pressures of life, the systematic control of our people's mind to let them know that they weren't good enough, mm. they weren't going to go back home, this is all there is, you assimilate, you fit in. Because I think we, and this is just personal, yes, yeah? yes, yes. I think we as uh, West Indians assimilated more to this country to mm. be accepted more than the other nationality that came. Mm. <clears throat> that has caused, I believe, mm. um, a slight separation from Trinidad, Barbados, St. Kitts, yes. Jamaica, where we have come from. Yes. When you go home, back to your country, of your forefathers, your parents, etc., mm. there's always a bit more of, more of a family community. Yes. The village is strong. Yes. When you come back to the UK, you want to replicate that, yeah. but the pressures of life and how it's set, sometimes you just automatically drift apart. And we need to find a way of finding something in common that brings us together. I, I, like, I like that what you're saying. I, I call it the, <laughs> it's something I created a few years ago mm. called the black element. Yeah. And I, uh, the black element was finding that common denominator yes. that you can rally around. Remember that song, with, uh, I think it was Culture or Bonnewilla, rally around the flag, yeah. rally around the red, gold. <laughs> it is finding that common denominator. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that is so crucial, which is a teaching moment that just came out now. Finding that common denominator and say, how can we as a people can actually pull together, replicating what the Windrush generation did. We just celebrated 75 years. We don't want to just celebrate it, celebrate it without actually achieving some of the outstanding things that they, things did, that achieve. they did. Yes, and that's important. Yes. So the service that Broker House provide isn't just about 
doing a will, doing an LPA. Mm. It's about preserving what you've worked for. Yes. Once you've preserved what you've worked for, how can you then build on it? Yes. How can you then make that work even better than mm. what it is? Mm. The people you are leaving your assets to yes. need to understand the value of what you're leaving that yes. asset to. They need to understand what they can do with that asset to make it grow. Yes. I'll give you a simple example. You have a mum and dad that's bought a house. The house mm. is now worth £800,000. They've passed on. They're leaving it to four or five children. Mm. Four or five children are going to get a share of that house. All four or five children are not going to agree what's going to happen to their share of the assets. Yes. You might have one say, don't sell the house. Let's rent it out and share the assets of the rent yes. and we're going to grow the property. I would say, no, I want my money now, mm. which is understandable. Yes. But if you take your money now or whatever you do with it, you have to find a way of making that money work, work for you. For you. Not about buying the watch or the car or the, I mean, no, like the, oh, like the, good the shiny thing. things. Yeah, yeah. No, making that money work for you and then the returns on that money mm. you use to enhance your life mm. if you can. Mm. But if you can't enhance your life, let the money work for you. So what you're saying then, if somebody's listening and they got this 800,000 home and there are five of them there, the best financial advice that one would give to them is what then? Bearing in mind, I have to be careful yeah, about yeah. financial yeah, advice, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 so okay. let's draw okay. that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. point there. Well, yeah, yeah, what yeah. I'd say to them is, yeah. take your time uh, and discuss your options. Yeah. Look at it properly, yeah. without arguing. Mm. Look at it analytically. Look at it from an investment money point of view and look at it how it is going to better my life. Yeah. Not being greedy, mm. but how can what mum and dad aunts and uncle, whoever, yes. has did, how can I make that work for me even more yes. now? Yes. So therefore, what, what should be happening then is a release of um, financial consultants who have the community at heart. Without a doubt. To go there and to infiltrate and say, listen, we're on an agenda to build us and to create us. Yes. Yes. It's, it's so important. Wow. All right. Broker House is here. Yeah. Broker House is mine. Broker House yes. is Patrick Morris. Broker House. Okay. We got Broker House. All yes. right. So it's not just about me. Yes. Yeah. There are many financial advisors out there, male and female, black and white. But mm. who can you work with? Who can you identify with? And who's going to have your best interests at heart? Mm. Yeah. When you apply for a plumber or a mechanic or a builder or, or anybody, mm. you're going to look at one or two people. Yes. And you can wonder, who am I comfortable with? Who am yes. I going to work with? Yeah. What I'm saying is, have a look at Broker House. I think you'll find me very comfortable. Fantastic. And ladies and gentlemen, the number for Broker House is running, so running across the screen. Make sure you go, go to Broker House. Great deals to be made there. So the, the, the advantage, so I think we have dealt with it. The dangers of not doing so. Yeah. We, have, we have dealt with that. And the, the advantage of doing so. Yeah. If you want to break that down, what's the dangers in a, in a nutshell of not getting your house in order financially? Wills and all those other things. You will lose. And the yeah. government will win. Mm. The family will not win. If you don't get it in order, if you love your family, yeah. and you love your loved ones, get it in order. It's important. So therefore, if you don't do it, Rishi Sunak and King Charles will get it. I'm just breaking it down. And there's <laughs> not <at all. laughs> so maybe that might, imp might, yeah. might, that might empower them to maybe, actually do maybe. something. And the advantage of not doing s and uh, and the, and the, and the day and the advantage of doing so. Then, yeah. The advantage yeah. of doing so is the satisfaction it leaves you that you have not worked for nothing. Yes. You're enjoying what you have, if you can, mm. but you know <clears throat> that you're leaving something to some loved ones yes. who will now educate themselves yes. that can build something more than what you've left behind. Fantastic. Now, before we wrap up, I want to touch on this word which is going around for years. There's a talk for years and years, and we do not want it to be for another year. Reparations. Yeah. What do you say? Yes or no? I say yes. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of things, and this is just a personal view again. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't speak for anybody else about mm. myself. I say yes. Mm. Um, but, you know, whatever comes our way, whoever's negotiating on our behalf, have to connect with people like me and you. Yes. They have to make themselves accountable. Mm -hmm. They have to make themselves available. And they have to make themselves explainable mm -hmm. so that we understand. Yeah. Once that's done, it's how can we best use what we've got for the community? Yes. Not a fragmented community, but a community we want to create.
so that we are proud lifting up our head and walking yeah. down the road knowing that we are from Trinidad we're from Jamaica yes. we've received we have built yes. I've come saw and conquered that's the kind of mentality I want us to have with whatever we receive if we receive it and and you said if we receive it do you believe that we will receive it I don't know enough mm. I want us to receive mm. it I hope we receive it mm. but I don't want it to be a fragmented receivership yes. receivership uh, so people say they don't want to get it. They, they do not give it to the politicians in the Caribbean or so, you know. Everything is about trust. trust. Yeah, trust. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I build my company on trust. Yes. Um, I trust what I'm doing. I trust what I'm doing for my people. Yes. The people who are in a position of ability, power and skill, knowledge mm. and know-how mm. need to gain the trust of the people they're representing. Yes. Yeah. How they do that? Yeah, and and I, and I think it's a topic which is going around and around for a while. But um, they're going to be talking about it at the at diaspora conference as well, and it's been going on for a while. Yeah, and and we hope that somehow, as you I can say, we all touch base and come together. Yeah, to for it to happen. Now, before we go, we are, I always like to ask you. Um, but before I go into that last one about mm. what's your mantra and your favorite word, what is your message then from Broker House that you say to the people? about you you know what 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 in the last word you want you know you can say to people yeah okay so <clears throat> being a, a child of uh, parents that came in the late 50s early 60s born educated here going through the struggles uh, many of us as young mm. black boys and girls did in the 60s and the 70s do not lose your identity trust the people that look like you talk like you to provide a service that's going to benefit you Mm. Some people are going to let you down. Some people are going to make you feel good and give you what you want. Trust us. Trust me. I can give you, I can help you where you need help. If I can't help you, I will tell you I can't help you. Mm. I will point you in the direction of people that can help you. But mm. we are good enough and we are capable of providing first class quality service. And, and, and I want to give a clap. Normally we don't clap, but I, I give you a clap yeah. because that, that's really powerful. Because people tend to look at a person and they can really trust them a lot mm. than just wanting to make a quick buck. Yeah. What's your mantra? What's your favorite word? What's your motivating word that inspires you, that drives you? Because I've everyone, everyone, everyone has their down yeah. moments. I've you know? I, I got quite a few. Yeah. From the business point of view, it's, yeah. it's broke out. It may sound like a cliche, yeah. but it's quality service. I, can, I put the service... Mm -hmm that I provide at the top mm. more than the price, the quality, mm. the image, the quality of the service, that's the integrity of me. Yeah. Um, family is very important to yes. me. Um, believe in a higher power than myself is important. Yes. Um, understanding where we come from in Jamaica, because I'm Jamaican descent, yeah. so I'm not going to speak about any other country. Yeah. Yeah. Jamaica and our roots back to Africa, wherever that is in Africa. Mm. Do not lose your sense of identity. Mm. It's so powerful. Once you yeah. know who you are yes. and what you are and that you are valuable, you are unstoppable. Were you listening to my walk and talk motivation? <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> because I was going to... Unstoppable is the word. Because yeah. my favorite thing is saying, once you know who you are, yeah. you become unstoppable. unstoppable. That's powerful. That. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Ladies and gentlemen... Oh, Patrick, I want to thank you so much yeah. for joining the show. And That's that was right. really thank awesome you. and really powerful. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember to watch the show and to actually tap into Patrick Morrison Brokerage House. And also, most importantly, refer it and tell your friends about it. And thank you so much for joining us. Now, the, the show has been very interesting. And uh, it's not just about motivation and inspiration, but it's talk about depths. And uh, we, we started off talking about the Windrush generation, which built... That was 75 years on now. But there's something which we picked up on, and that is they built something over the years while they were here. And somehow we have dropped the ball. But hey, it has arise again. What they're about is there for us to pick up the ball and to run again and to take it to the next level. We can't miss it. And we cannot afford to allow the government or so to be giving us given us when we have it we have actually got to take ownership and ladies and gentlemen as we discuss your wills get all those things in order don't just don't get caught out into a gofundme i'm not going to hit out against that but there's so much that mr morrison spoke about with brokerage house and it is for you to make a decision and 
to make a difference, not just for you, but your children, children, children. Leaving a legacy is very important. Don't leave it to the king and to Sunak. <laughs> they say, thank you so much for joining. For more information on Patrick Morrison and Broker House um, Limited, visit our website at silburn.com and please remember to visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel. More details can be found at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Silburn City Show.